holiday resort in Belito. Uh, the wind was blowing like the clappers this morning and it, the campsite is so well protected you can hardly feel it where we can be. The Blutians are beautiful and clean. Campsites are lovely. I think it's a lovely place to come if you've got kids. The beach is just you cross the road and there's a pathway down to the beach. I'm going to show you a couple of things that we've done to our Kiva uh, to make it easier for us. Maybe not everybody would need the same things that we have but we've just done these mods or, or whatever you would call them I don't know if they're mods but things to make it easier for us to do what we do and I go through them all and just show you one at a time what we've actually done if you need any information on how to go about it you can get hold of me and I will try and assist. We also did some things that Bush Lapa would actually do for you. Uh, but we decided uh, to do these ourselves. It also saves a little bit of money. Then in the left hand hatch in the front in the wood rack I have a spare bottle gas cylinder here for the weaver uh, and all our pegs are packed in here I have a saw in there for emergencies maybe and then I've made up a extension cable that goes between the caravan and my vehicle if I somewhere where I haven't been driving the vehicle I can plug the vehicle and the caravan together uh, with a 10, 10 meter cable so you don't have to park right next to it uh, and then you can charge from the the caravan charging system Then in the same area behind the deep freeze, as close to the deep freeze as you can get it, if you want to do the same, is the Weber, which is very handy for us. We use it for all sorts of things. Not for brying, just for lasagnas and chips and pizzas and things like that. Got a bag here with our solar panel cables in it. Goes in here very easily as well. Plus our extension for our 220 when we have 220 supply. Then I'm busy designing a a net that's going to go from here to the vehicle at the back of the vehicle I'm going to have bars at the back of the vehicle where a shade cloth net will go to stop stones coming up uh, stop the chipping instead of having flaps like that at the back of the vehicle all along I'm going to try and design a, a net that goes along you see the Australian guys use them quite a lot. On the inside here of the trailer I've designed a, another panel. One for normal onshore 220 volts and then I have another another plug there, this one over here that will run from my inverter uh, they both have USB plus I have a 
a 12 volt USB on either side of the panel and place for you to put your phone for charging or camera batteries or whatever eh? we find it more convenient in this area because it's above the table okay and then your batteries or whatever can also just be on the table whereas the old place they have to go from there across the seat here and then onto the table so you find above the table is a a better position for it yeah i've got my gopro batteries now charging uh, we found it very handy and the usb i've got a remote switch over here uh, sorry not the USB the inverter has a remote that can switch it on and off as well and that's my inverter it's a Phoenix one 12375 one which is handy it's a sine wave one uh, so charging of electric toothbrushes is not a problem because if you don't use a sine wave inverter for your electric toothbrush it will blow the charging system in the in the toothbrush so you need something like that and I think anything that's got a little motor in it like a fan or something like that you need to have a sine wave inverter I'm not 100% of that but that's what I believe it's also better for your batteries and charging your camera batteries and uh, and I can modified. use my egg beater yeah <laughs> <laughs> my electric egg beater and the wash basin here I think I've showed you this before I'm 100% sure but we cut the double one off and we've uh, I just blocked his holes up here with a plastic plug that you can buy from hardware shops and we use that just for brushing our teeth washing our face in the mornings and we use those cup holders there as cup holders for our toothbrush and whatever very handy then I designed this wash rack here which folds up flat made out of 25 more aluminium square tubing it takes a bigger basin which we find much easier than the smaller basins for doing pots and pans and things like that the little ones at the back you actually battle to do the pots and pans Then I designed this rack to go on the side of the trailer above the kitchen where we put our glasses and odds and ends while Rose is cooking. Uh, it's really very handy to have the rack up here. It was all laser cut out, bent and then welded. And you can have it made out of stainless or whatever you like. Ours is just mild steel being powder coated. That they supply. Uh, but of course when the wind blows it just does that. So actually not a very good idea at all. They did change it at one stage and they had a pin going through the hinges. But I think they, they had problems with that. Just a little bit of a rubber band there and that stops it slamming against the the wood uh, rack here. I'll put a handle on the inside of the back door here so when you're inside there you can just grab that handle 
and pull the handle towards you which then closes this door eh? on the inside of the back door here you've got the net here and the cover at the back here that folds down by the door but you can see here I've put a elasticated bracket up here as well okay and then it goes down like that which actually gets in the road so we don't use ours very often so I've just made the elastic bracket with a clip that goes in at the top here that holds it right out the way it's just much easier for us to to get in the back door it holds it right out the way now on the step at the back here I modified this piece here with two washers it's got a slot in it so that shackle can move in that okay so when you let the door down now the shackle doesn't turn sideways and then when you step on it it, it uh, goes down with a jolt this way it keeps the shackle nice and straight eh? it's a simple mod to do uh, we found sometimes that we stepped on it and all of a sudden it, it gave way because this shackle here turned sideways in here which it can't do anymore we've had our, our seat or cushions on the inside here cut shorter. cut shorter here because they stuck over the edge here it just seemed for us to get in the road uh, so we cut them 50 mil shorter and then we had them reupholstered and I think it cost us 200 Rand to have it reupholstered they're now very very nice eh? And we did away with the backrest. And we've done away with the backrest because we don't have a a grandkid that would go with us. Small enough. That would uh, that would fit in here, so we don't need the backrest to couple a lot of space. And you, we don't actually lean back on it anyway, so it suited us or suits us. <laughs> Our table here the hole that they made for the for the uh, pipe to go into was filed so badly that this table was a rattle around the clock so I just had two plates cut uh, out of stainless steel laser cut to the right dimensions and then I bolted them on now the table doesn't swivel around all over the place and at the top there I just put two screws that went through and lock against the pipe on the inside the table now is nice nice and steady so ever they had filing it needs to take a filing course Okay, underneath the rack that I had made up as well I've got a 12 volt fan here uh, my son ordered these from Amazon it's got a three speed uh, which blows right onto our bed at night which is great eh? and hardly draws any current eh? Can actually show you what it draws but it's not a lot of current eh? 
I think it's half an amp, eh? 0.5, eh? I don't know if you can It's a mod that we've done here to keep the sun off the top of the the trailer over here Okay I used the existing rail rope rail here and then on the top of the lid there I fixed another rope rail and then we made up a piece of the silver ripstop canvas to go along the side here that way you ha can have the flaps uh, open inside you can allow air in the whole time even if it's raining they can be open and hopefully it keeps all the sun off and then in the front here okay we added that piece on there all right and then we it's fixed over here with velcro so we sewed on a velcro piece for that and that's what rose and myself came up with that and we did the same on the other side uh, the rope rail on the top of the lid and then uh, I fixed one onto the back of the awning aluminium See, he has one on the back of the, the awning piece over here, and we fixed the, the rope rail onto that, and then made up a piece to do the same as on the other side. And that keeps all the sun off this piece here. And like I say, we can actually keep this like this if you wanted. You could have even have it right open if there's no muchis around. Or you could have that zipped up and open when it's raining. You could have that like that. And that piece would also keep the rain off this area. Hoping that's going to work well. Also, being able to run a a logic fan on my inverter. It's got a timer on it, a two-hour timer. And we can set it up at night to run just for two hours. And it draws about 3.8 amps. That's the teddy bear lady. <laughs> Making teddy bears. I fitted two Vectron seventy five fifteen solar regulators.
and then on the outside here are the two plugs for the regulators I've just got one with silicon blocked off there as a dummy stop dust going in you just pull those off bit of an afterthought I should have left a bit of a gap here it would have been easier but it's done now ain't gonna change it Then inside here we took out the cups and plate things that they supply and I made up that one at the back here for the cups and then it has a strap that goes through all the cups and then just hooks on there uses a bit of the room above whereas before none of that room was used <laughs> 